Welcome to this episode of Western New York Trout Pod, the podcast of Western New York Trout Unlimited. I'm Jim Jowsey. I believe the children are our future, sang a person much more famous than myself, but I could still agree wholeheartedly. This is especially true seeing as when I go to chapter meetings and events, many, if not most of those in attendance, tend to skew older. Where are the next generation of stream keepers, anglers, and conservationists? How do we foster a love of the outdoors and a passion to protect it with our progeny? And how do we make it fun? I had the opportunity to sit down with Lindsay Agnes, our state VP of Youth Education here in New York, and we talked about her background, what a VP of Youth Education does, some of the youth programs designed to get youth engaged and hopefully excited about utilizing and protecting our natural resources and how anyone can get involved. Don't forget to hit the episode description for links to some of the things that we spoke about. Enjoy. I am talking to Lindsay Agnes. Um, She is in the Seth Green Trout Unlimited chapter, which for those of you who aren't in our geographical area, is in the Rochester area, which is off to our east. And Lindsay is also the VP for youth education for our, our state council. And, um, you know, being someone who does a lot of the youth, um, you know, the youth education and the youth programs for my own chapter, you know, we're going to have a lot of fun with this episode. Um, Lindsay, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. And I'm always excited to talk about what's happening with our youth and our young adults across New York State. Well, let's start and, you know, have folks get a little bit of information about you, you know, your history, you know, your journey as an angler, a conservationist, a, you know, TU member. Um, how, you know, tell us about yourself. Well, I started uh, fishing when I was a little girl. I was blessed to be born into a family that had a cottage on one of the Finger Lakes, Honey Oil Lake. And um, so my grandfather and grandmother we spent a lot of summers. It was a summer cottage and I spent the summers fishing, fishing, but I learned to fish as a young girl. And back then we lived on the side of the hills down there and there was maybe two or three TV stations with the old rabbit ear. Uh, so I, I couldn't sit inside and watch TV. I had to be outdoors. And so I spent a lot of time fishing off the dock and climbing in gullies and playing outside in the woods. And so I learned to be a conservationist and angler kind of from a lake perspective. And then later in life, I'm, I'm a biochem major from Geneseo undergrad, and I have a master's in business. But I um, I learned to really love the outdoors. Um, I was a Girl Scout, did a lot of camping. And um, so I was a young lady that was outside all the time. And um, I think that carried over into angling and conservation. And so... That's why I'm here today. I love kids. I love youth. Um, I was in the corporate world for many years. I was at Eastman Kodak Company for 34 years. And then I um, worked for a local hospital system as a director of a project management office. And so when I retired, I I decided uh, two years ago when I retired, just step into the TU vice president role for youth education. That role had people kind of come and go. Um, A lot of the the TU presidents um, were kind of managing some of the youth activities. And I thought this would be a great area for me to get into with my background with kids and being an elderly person. I have grandkids, so I really love children. And so here I am. Uh, I have uh, 13 years of guiding. I have a fly fishing guide here in New York state. I've run veteran programs and women's programs. And so um, I'm been just started. I started this role a couple of years ago for, at the State Council for Youth Education, and um, I've been with TU for about 17 years. Wow. Well, what's um, uh, what are the what are the duties of a VP of Youth Education? Well, my my role at the at the state level is to really work with the chapters, uh, be a liaison between the youth education coordinators and the trout in the classroom coordinators. And we'll talk a little bit more about those roles, but I'm there at the state level to help coordinate that. Um, I work with the TU national staff to bring kind of New York state to the map on what's happening around youth at the TU national level. 
I'm in charge of youth memberships and helping grow youth uh, memberships and working with the chapters to help them with events if they're if they need ideas or they need to have some help with education. Um, I try to attract families and ensure that um, we are doing background checks and liability forms at our camps. So I we make sure that we run um, safe uh, environment for our youth and. Um, and then again, I attend the state council meetings and represent youth education. Um, I help with some conferences and things, uh, regional rendezvous and other activities across the state. So where do we currently stand in New York State with youth membership numbers? I mean, out of youth versus adults, I mean, where do we stand? Are, are we doing a good We're job of bringing three, in the next generation? Yeah, 3%. So in, in June of 2022, when I joined at the state level, we had across New York State only 60 youth members, which is really low. And today, uh, I'm proud to say we have 247 youth members, both stream explorers and TU teens. So that's that's a 3% of our uh, our total membership, youth and adults, is around 7,400 members. And um, we have uh, 247 youth. So it's growing, and I'm very proud of that. We're really starting to gauge more youth and track our youth and, and give them opportunities across New York State. Wow, that's that's in, in two years. That's an incredible, incredible jump. Yep. Um, yeah. Kind of going off of my script here what mm -hmm. do you think what do you think we're doing better now than we you know than we were doing two years ago it's awareness you know having uh, a number and starting to count I call out the chapters that have no youth we have three chapters they have zero youth and uh, we've been slowly uh, talking to um, the chapters to say don't forget them they may not be showing up to your chapter meeting but there's opportunities to bring families in. And if you're bringing in a family as a unit, um, the youth come in. Sometimes you attract the youth, teens, and um, you'll you'll get the families in there. So I think um, just having some focus on it, um, I think lack of awareness of what, what really were the youth numbers and no one was talking about it. And so I've been busy talking to chapters and helping them make sure um, they have some programs running for families and, and young uh, youth. Now, given the numbers, um, let's expand on this a little bit. How important do you feel, you know, it is to engage the younger generations? Well, it's very important as we age out, who are going to be our, who are going to look out for our trout, for our cold water conservation, um, for our streams. And we really need to educate our children to understand, first of all, being outdoors and why it's important to um, be conservationists or ambassadors for our local streams and rivers, and that there's no one speaking for the trout. And we need to make sure that, you know, we have cold, clean water, we have nice streams nearby, and they're nice and clean, and we have um, fish in there um, for those folks that like fishing, but even conservationists and hikers and mountain climbers, we like to have pristine outdoors and we need to take care of our outdoor outdoors definitely somebody's got to do it um that's right so when you're talking to the local chapters um you know as, as far as just kind of making them aware of you know what the youth numbers are you know and things that we can do are you finding it's gonna sound uh, is it is it kind of an aha moment have you found anybody who's uh, not concerned. I mean, I mean, what's what what's generally the response that you get when you you know inform these? I mean, because yeah, I go to the meetings. You know, I'm I'm on the on the board here. You know, it's we're an older group of folks. Yeah, yeah. I think right now they're very meeting meeting focused from month to month, and who's the speaker and what's going on. You're not going to engage youth at those evening meetings. First of all, they're in bed or they're having their bath or they're they're getting ready for school. Um, even teens, they have jobs, they, they, they may be off to college. Um, so finding a different time and a different day and a different slot, and it doesn't have to be lots of events. It could be just start out with one, but I think engaging the chapters to look at how do we meet and engage the community in a different way. So I think that's kind of an aha. 
And then just getting volunteers who are available. Um, it takes time to run these events. And as you know, Western New York, you've been running your Stream Explorers program, which is very successful. And, you know, it takes a lot of volunteer time. And um, so I think it's just a awareness that even start small and work your way into a bigger, bigger programs. Yeah, definitely. With all the competition that we have, I mean, you wouldn't think that things like sports and everything else would be competition, but you know, everything is competition for time. And I mean, the one thing that I've learned is, you know, you start out with, you know, a relatively large group of kids, you know, if, if, eight months down the line, you've still got two or three coming on a regular basis. You know, you want to grab and hold on and not let go. So. Absolutely. Well, I think there's a really big play here for Trout Unlimited because the current state of our youth, they're very much involved in screen time, uh, video games, uh, TV, you know, um, a lot of things, uh, social media, a lot of things going on there. And um, they, they do even through school, they're on the internet more, they're playing their math games or their reading games. And so they're on devices, maybe five hours a day. And we're losing that playtime out, outdoors, the playtime that actually brings in um, naturalists. You you learn skills in outdoors, You you there's health benefits, you know, you're, you go out and play and um, we're losing a lot of that. And I think um, to you can play to that. You know, girls are 16% less likely to go outside and play like boys are. It's just a fact. Um, even parents are encouraging boys to be outside, go out and play, get the stink off of you or whatever they used to say. But now uh, the girls are indoors and they're not encouraged to be outside too. So we have a huge opportunity and it really aligns to TU's mission to really engage our children in outdoor activities that build and foster our mission for TU, which is building the next generation of river stewards and conservation-minded anglers. And being an ambassador for your local stream or your watershed that you're there, being curious, making a difference and, and looking what's in that stream or that, that pond or that lake and learning more about it. Um, TU's mission aligns back with uh, the youth being maybe an ambassador for our, for our watersheds. Cool. So what do we have going on in New York State, you know, that we can, you know, get these kids outside? Well, to start off, uh, TU has a program, an overall program. It's called the Headwaters Program for Stream Engagement. Um, the Headwaters Program starts out with kids. These are stream explorers. These are children really 12 years and younger. Um, many children are engaged in a program called Trout in the Classroom. Um, it's very, very popular in, in the New York City um, area. TIC really takes children they bring into the, um, into the classroom information about um, the life cycle of a trout. It could be a salmon also. Um, they set up an aquarium and they receive eggs and they hatch into alvin. They, they have fry and alvin and then this small um, tr small trout and they release them in their local water shed. So um, today across uh, New York State, we have 25 chapters out of the 28 that are engaged in a trout in the classroom program at local schools. Um, there's 272 schools across New York State that currently are in a trout in the classroom program with multiple tanks. Um, and that impacts about 17,500 kids across New York State right now have tanks and are looking at their trout and, and understanding the life cycle of a trout um, or a salmon. And they are planning their outings in the spring to release their, their trout or salmon into a local stream. So it's really great that these teachers, anything from third, fourth, fifth, and, and even middle school teachers, um, the science teachers are engaging in the trout and classroom program and putting trout in the schools for kids to learn and study without having to go outdoors. So that right now the, the bigger areas are really New York City and the Croton watershed, Westchester County and Putnam County have the biggest um, access to trout in the classroom. Because if you think about those, the city kids don't have as much access to streams and water and local streams and waterways that they can go to. So it's a huge um, program. So Trout in the Classroom is really 
where we we can start to talk about Trout Unlimited and kids can get an awareness. The other activities are Stream Explorer programs in Western New York. You guys have a great Stream Explorer program where we're engaging kids younger, 12 and under, um, in just the basics of fly fishing, conservation, tying flies, and really becomes a great area to start to welcome families into the chapter. Um, the next group of youth, so that's kind of, you know, these are watershed educations. It can be a half day, a couple hours, um, and that type of thing. Um, the teens are really ages 13 and up, and um, we have a youth camp here in New York State that Trout Unlimited runs the end of June. Uh, it's on the Delaware um, so we have a youth camp opportunity, and some of the local chapters help with the DEC camps. There's Girl Scout camps and some other uh, Boy Scout camps and, and things where there is some watershed education along with um, fishing education. Um, we also work with the Girl Scouts. Uh, there's a program, a patch called the Stream Girls patch, and the Boy Scouts have a merit badge. So um, there are some watershed and fishing education going on across that for the teens. Um, and then as we move along the water, the uh, Headwaters program, we get into the young adults. So these are college students, um, and we have college clubs across New York State that we work with, that I work with. Um, we currently have, trying to think, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, 12 college clubs uh, that have college age fishing clubs. Um, these students are, it's a program with Proud Unlimited and Costa Sunglasses. It's called the TU Costa Five Rivers Program. And we have colleges, we have Cornell University, Hobart William Smith, Paul Smith College, St. Lawrence University, SUNY Cobleskill, uh, SUNY, SUNY College of Environmental Science, University of Buffalo, SUNY Plattsburgh, Colgate University, and SUNY Morrisville all have five river programs either in, underway or um, starting up. So with all of these college kids, um, there's a huge opportunity to engage the college students. Um, they, um, in order to be a member of the Five Rivers Club, they get they get discounts from um, local uh, companies on equipment and gear. Um, they actually um, have to do five pillars to be part of the college club. They have to do a conservation project on a local stream, either tree planting or restoration or be involved in that. They have to do some community outreach, whether it's with uh, helping youth with fly fishing events on, or running some events on campus for an outreach could be working with veterans. Um, they have to be an ambassador for Custa Sunglasses um, in, on the campus uh, and Trout Unlimited. Um, and then they, they can actually connect with their local TU chapter on some of the conservation work and pro projects at the chapter level. So um, uh, I've been slowly getting around New York State working with uh, Five River programs. And it's been a really great um, opportunity to work with the college kids. That's great. That's you. We're, we're getting them from, you know, from under 12, you know, right up through adulthood. That's, that's awesome. Um, so that's, that's a lot of, a lot of different kids, a lot of different ages, a lot of different, um, uh, you know, ways of looking at things. I mean, given your experience, you know, what do you feel are some of the main challenges of creating a good youth program? I think it's volunteers. It's finding mentors and, and adults that have the time and the willingness um, to volunteer and engage uh, the youth. Uh, families are so busy, young families with their sports schedules. Like you said, you've got school and the adults have um, work schedules and just logistics of life, right? Getting getting home, getting dinner on the table, doing homework and, and getting kids to bed on time. So I think Having uh, the time on weekends, it's very precious, and a lot of these kids are involved in sports and a lot of activities, visiting relatives and families and things. So vacations, you know, engaging the kids and the things that they want to do. I think, you know, finding volunteers to put the time in 
I think we're very fortunate wherever we can find people that want to volunteer and mentor these kids and spend a portion of the days, you know, on weekends um, to mentor kids. I think it's really, um, it's kind of the biggest challenge is finding people that have the time to, to do that. You know, being retired, I do have time to put more time into that. Now, do you find it easy or harder to um, inspire and mobilize youth as opposed to adults? I think youth are uh, easier to inspire, probably harder to keep engaged, right? Depending on the age limit. I think 13 and up stay a little, 12 and up, they stay a little more engaged. So I think the the approach is to tell them what we're going to do. Um, I think it's easier. They jump right in. I mean, you don't have to worry about getting them started. Um, I think they're curious. They re, they have they reflect on what they're learning about. Sometimes they're like, wow, this is like really cool. Whether they're tying a fly or learning to cast. Um, <clears throat> so I think it's you know I think it's really um, building their confidence, and I think they're very excited uh, to get them engaged. I think it's the harder thing is to keep them um, keep them going. Snacks. I've definitely found that snacks yeah. work, work in wonders. Sh- in shorter periods of, of education, right? You don't draw it out too much. And a lot of times don't explain too much. Just let them, let them look at that and, and explore it themselves. I, you know, last summer we had a, um, a young lady from the DEC um, come down and come down to one of our, our creeks. And um, she did an entomology presentation and we were in that creek and we were, you know, saining the water and, you know, digging up all these, you know, the, the bugs and the leeches and the crawfish and everything. And, you know, and just learning, you know, how just knowing what's in the water. I mean, stuff that you've never even noticed before because you don't look down or, right. you, or you, you don't look down, you know, with that much of a critical eye, you know, but, you know, in, in learning, okay, well. If you have this kind of a bug in your water, you know, then maybe you need a little bit of help. If you have this kind of a bug in your water, well, then this kind of a bug is only going to be here if the water's really clean. So, and that's right. It was, it was so great to see, you know, the, the kids that were there, just the light bulbs turn on, you know, and just realize that these aren't just places to play and hang out. I mean, even though they are, you know, but these are, you know, these are living, breathing you know, places just teeming with life. And, you know, it definitely kind of gives you, I mean, me, you know, it, you know, it, it makes you think, you know, it makes you appreciate it just that much more. Even adults get excited. We um, do uh, the stream girls badge. One of the, the modules that they have to do a part of their core activities is do a macro invertebrate survey and go in and learn. And the girls, uh, these are girls that are 11, 12 year olds. We put them in waders. They're skipping to the stream. You know, we tell them safety. Don't get in the water. Don't go above your waist. Keep your wading belt on. And, you know, we had 13 girls dancing down to the water. And the first thing they do is they all sit in the water. <laughs> so, you know, having them have buckets, uh, you know, pans, and they can collect uh macroinvertebrates on the stream bottom and learning, like you said, the health of the stream. And some of the girls may be scientists. You know, they may grow up to be scientists. Um, They like the science. They like the data. They like the recording, measuring, studying, identifying. You know, that brings these science skills out. But some of the girls look at the stream from an artist's perspective, look at the water flow, the colors, the, you know, the nature of the birds. And there's there's more of an artist view. Um, and then there's the angler view. You know, girls are, they're looking for fish. And can I go fishing with this bug? Can I put it down a hook and catch a fish? And, you know, they're all asking really good questions. And, you know, so it, it brings out every child. It brings out a different perspective of why they're there and what what encourages joy in them. Um, so you want to encourage not just the science side, but there could be the artist you know, artistic side or the, um, the angler, uh, in there or conservationist. So we have, it, it really encourages them to maybe even go into more scientific backgrounds and, um, stream, um, even stream. We talk about the stream walk and talk about how to make the stream healthier 
what's man-made on the stream and what's natural and how do we make this stream more um, um, presentable to the fish and how do we provide more shade and comfort and wa cleaner water. And the girls observe things that are in the stream that are man-made that shouldn't belong there, garbage or tires or you know, um, dams and things like that, that weren't there a long time ago. So we talk about that and they, they learn, uh, um, they learn a lot that, that way they can kind of observe when they walk to a stream, what's happening on that stream. Whatever gets you to care, huh? That's correct. Yeah. So yeah, well, you want to build um, curiosity, you know, these kids, we got to get them curious, um, helps them build their self, ex self esteem, confidence, um, builds skills, um, it gives them creativity and confidence to be out in the water. Um, so it's all good stuff. And, um, you know, this is really good for their mental and physical, um, you know, persona and their physical health. Most definitely. So is there anything new coming up in the, in any state youth initiatives, um, you know, that we should know about and anything that you can talk about? Mm. Well, we got a couple that we've got a, a couple, one other new program that's really been pretty exciting. It's called the Mayfly Project. And again, this is mentoring foster care children through fly fishing. It's a new program. It's been, it's a national program. It's uh, the mayflyproject.com. You can go to it um, here in New York state last year in Millbrook, New York, the mid Hudson trout unlimited chapter um, worked with um the mentoring of foster care children and they started a mayfly program and they they have about six to eight kids and you take them on five different outings it can be at a local pond spin fishing it you know we try to use fly rods but we we um work with the kids on um just having a mentor and having somebody that cares again we're talking about self-esteem and confidence learning a new skill um, there's 415,000 children in foster care in the United States. 42% of foster care children will be convicted of a crime. Um, these are really bad statistics. 83,000 foster care children will become homeless by age 18. Um, supporting our local watersheds with children and, and mentoring these foster care Children gives them an opportunity to build confidence and develop a connection with the outdoors and learning to have an adult that they can trust and, and have a great experience with. So um, we're starting a Mayfly program here in Rochester, New York. Um, a gentleman, Jordan Murphy, is running that. We're going to kick that off this year. So um, that, those are that's a really new, exciting program. That's awesome. Yeah, we tried to... Um tried to get one going here um a few, a few years ago yep and um uh, it's just the way that worked out they ended up choosing the uh the millbrook project so i'm glad that they did really really they did well how can how can folks get involved if you're if you're near the uh millbrook or the rochester area you can certainly volunteer um they're still looking for volunteers for the mayfly program um the other thing is there's a new york state tu trout camp um, they actually need help. It, it's down on the Delaware. It's the last week in June, the 23rd through the 28th. They're looking for mentors, our fishing buddies in the evening. Um, this trout camp takes youth. They, they teach them fly tying, fly casting. They do a macro invertebrate survey. They let the kids, um, actually do electro shocking of fish and measuring and collecting data. So, if anyone loves the Delaware River water system and wants to fish on the in the west uh, branch of the Delaware in, in the evening, you can mentor a youth and, and be a fishing buddy for a couple hours from six to eight. And then uh, during the day, you can go you can go fishing yourself. But um, we're looking for volunteers that might want to come down to the Trout Waters Camp this year. Again, June 23rd through 28th um, as a mentor. Um, and we're also looking for youth that want to be participating in that program. If uh, you want to uh, sponsor a youth, you can send them to camp. Yeah, we have those links. We'll put those in the uh, in the episode description. So if folks want to find out more information. Yeah, but I would just encourage everybody to work with their chapter and engage more families and youth. Awesome. So well, back to personal. You said in the beginning that you were a guide. 
that you did some yes. guiding. So what yes. are your what are some of your, your favorite species to target around here? Well, locally, I'm a steelhead fisherman. I, this is my time of year. I love steelhead fishing. You've got the Lake Erie Tribs uh, and over where I am in the Rochester area. We have the Lake Ontario Tribs. Um, so if that's my favorite species. I love steelhead. And um, when I'm not fishing steelhead, I, I love brook trout. So I'm a brook trout uh, lover. I, I love to go down to Pennsylvania and I've been up to Labrador catching big brookies up in Canada. And um, so I'm devoted to a brook trout, even over a steelhead at times. But um, my husband, Dave, and I, we like to travel. We, we were lucky enough to retire and be able to take some vacations. So we've been doing some tarpon trips down in Isle Morada and trying to learn that game, you know, saltwater game, along with um, we go to Connecticut for stripers and um, also albacore fishing. But um, generally, you'll find me, uh, there's some local blue ribbon streams here on the Iwaka Creek and others that, you know, just a nice uh, flight. You can take your four weight and just go catch some small brown trout that are fun to play with. And uh, But, um, you know, I generally fly fish. Uh, I do have a center pin. I've done center pinning. When, when the shelf ice gets really bad in the winter and I can't get in the water for steelhead fishing, I'll, um, I'll center pin. I'll get out my center pin because I can fish uh, pretty effectively. But uh, generally, I fly fish whenever possible. And then in the July, August months, um, I go to more spin fishing a lot of times um, up in, you know, we go up to Thousand Islands and fish up there in Clayton and other areas. I'll get out my spinning rod when I'm on the St. Lawrence River type of thing or some of the lo local lakes and ponds. Um, when it when I fish for warm water species, I'll I'll get out of. I have grandkids, so I I take them spin fishing now. So we we have a Barbie uh, pole and Elsa pole, you know, uh, Batman pole and all that kind of stuff. So that we uh, I've been encouraging them to get just get the kids out and catch a fish, and um, they really do enjoy that. Awesome. How would somebody get in touch with you if they wanted to talk about a guide trip? Uh, I'm retiring this year, actually, uh -oh. after 13 years. <laughs> you can, I know. I, it was a, it was a big decision. Um, I've been guiding and, um, I decided I'm going to retire this year. I've got too many grandchildren and birthdays and volunteer work with Trout Unlimited that my weekends are becoming less and less. So, um, you know, the cost of insurance and, um, your guide's license, it's renewing this year. So I decided I'm going to just, uh, retire and be fishy grandma so um, um but if anybody has any questions around just the youth education activities you can reach out to me it's lindsay.agnes at gmail.com l-i-n-d-s-a-y dot agnes a-g-n-e-s-s at gmail.com um and uh, anybody interested in any youth uh activities or college clubs let me know Thanks for listening to Western New York Trout Pod, the podcast of the Western New York chapter of Trout Unlimited. You can find us on all the major podcast directories like Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube Music, and many others. Throw us a like or five-star review where you can. It helps us get the word out and recommend to a friend. We'll connect next time. Thanks again. <laughs>